Narcissistic collapse happens when a person with narcissistic personality disorder experiences a failure, humiliation, or other blow to their secretly fragile self-esteem. Remember, narcissists seem very confident in public, but they are actually only confident when they are feeding off the energy of others. They are unable to create their own intrinsic energy around their worth, their value, and their self-esteem. They must constantly be drawing on the energy of other people. Narcissistic collapses cause them to become embarrassed or humiliated, and it throws them off their game of being able to draw energy from other sources. Because they are aware of their low self-esteem in these moments of collapse, they then believe that the people around them think like them. They therefore lose the appearance of their value or their worth in those moments. Especially, narcissistic collapses prevent the narcissist from being able to draw on their normal supply from their victims or flying monkeys, and this creates a system of imbalance. In turn, this then causes them to engage in destructive behaviors to themselves, to those around them, because when they are faced with reality in these moments of narcissistic collapse, this turns into narcissistic rage. And when narcissists cannot manage their own emotional and mental states apart from other people, these narcissistic collapse are much worse than the normal narcissistic abuse cycle because the narcissist is unable to manage or handle the shame, the failure, embarrassment, or whatever emotion, even perceived emotion, has caused this collapse. Because the narcissist does not have any regulation techniques in place, this leads to rage. So it's similar to like a two-year-old who does not have the words to express themselves and then throws a tantrum. Narcissists throw similar tantrums, except Obviously, they are much worse because we're typically talking about adults and they use their rage to extract the same amount of pain that they are feeling onto those around them. So why do narcissists do this? One reason is because your emotional response to the pain that the narcissist is now causing you is a way for the narcissist to get energy from you and therefore fill up their emotional, their internal self-esteem supply. Inflicting pain in moments of narcissistic rage reminds the narcissist that they are powerful, that they are in control, that they set the rules, that they run the game, and ultimately that they do have power and control over their lives and situations. This is a sort of twisted self-soothing behavior that is often overlooked or even excused by those who are around the narcissist because they say things like, they just don't have the coping skills or they never learned how to do anything different or they never processed childhood trauma or this will pass or they usually aren't like this and so on and so forth. If you are dealing with a narcissist in any capacity and you have experienced one of these narcissistic collapses that have resulted in narcissistic rage against you or someone you know, then I want you to understand that not all behavior is equal and not all people are equal. Someone who is having a bad day who lashes out against another person is quick to realize their mistake and they will take measures to ensure that that does not happen again. Narcissists will go through the motions and potentially even apologize for their words and actions, but there will never be any change. The next time that there's an issue, expect them to again go into a narcissistic collapse and have the same reaction. And you will find yourself continuously making excuses for a narcissist because you refuse to recognize them for what they are and to call them by the correct label. I want to say a real quick note on narcissist apologies, which is that in a previous video I listed out covert contracts and what this can feel like specifically for when you are in a relationship with a narcissist. Apologies are used by both the narcissist and the victim in narcissistic relationships. And both parties will force these covert contracts of manipulation. When the narcissist does apologize, it's because they want you to forget about the deep concerns that you have towards them or the relationship in general, and they just want you to move on. It's not actually about rebuilding a foundation. 
It's not actually about acknowledging that there is an issue. It's about moving forward so that they can get back on track with the normal supply. The opposite can also be true. Someone who is in a relationship with a narcissist can often apologize to the narcissist even when they don't feel that anything was their fault and they are still going to have the issues that they are dealing with when it comes to the narcissist. These things will continue even after apologizing. However, in that moment, they are looking to move on and to get out of whatever phase they are in right now. So maybe they're in the devaluation phase where either name calling or snide remarks or the silent treatment are being used, but they know that if they apologize, the narcissist will punish them for a little bit longer or a little bit more, either through explaining why everything is actually their fault or how terrible of a person you are, but then the narcissist will feel vindicated and the relationship can get back to normal. The victim in this situation has made a covert contract with themselves to go through these types of stages so that they can get back to normal. Instead of actually addressing the root cause of the issues in the relationship, they agree that if they apologize, they can manipulate the situation to go back to their favor and back to, again, normal. So as I'm explaining the dynamics of the inner workings of a narcissistic relationship, I hope you can see now why there are so many layers of healing that are needed when you are coming out of this type of relationship. Your thinking has been so programmed for survival that creating authentic connections is nearly impossible. And especially when this goes without intervention. If you're ready to get off this roller coaster of a merry-go-round of allowing narcissists into your life and then continuing and strengthening the cycle of abuse, then I want you to text DETOX and your first name to 512-677-9322 and see if you qualify to join my Narcissistic Detox Intensive, in which I guarantee you will break the trauma bond, which will allow you to create a different cycle and a different outcome for your life. There are a lot of common questions around narcissistic collapse, and so I wanna take time to answer some of those right now. First of all, one of the most common questions asked is, does the narcissist actually recover from a narcissistic collapse? And in the majority of cases, the answer is yes. The narcissist will lash out enough, typically in rage against other people, towards themselves, towards a group of people or an organization, and then they get the energy that they need in order to fill their self-esteem levels back up and kind of level off. From here, they will continue on as if nothing happened and continue on their normal cycle of narcissistic abuse. Narcissists can experience many narcissistic collapses throughout their life, but like I've mentioned in all of my videos, narcissists learn. They learn. So it will be highly unlikely that they put themselves in that same position again without for certain knowing the outcome. So for example, if the narcissist felt they should have gotten a promotion at work and then they didn't get it, and that's the event that sparks the collapse, then the next time they are going up for a promotion, they will do a lot of networking. A lot of backdoor meetings and conversations will be had offline in order to ensure that the next time they apply for that promotion, they are guaranteed to get it. Another question that I get asked is, how do you handle a narcissist when they are in the middle of a narcissistic collapse? And my position on narcissists and dealing with them will always be that when at all possible, you should cut ties if you can. During the narcissistic collapse, I hope it is through this event that your eyes are opened to the true nature of the narcissist. There's never really a more defining or clear moment for people to see what's actually behind all the layers of mass that the narcissist will present to others and then show you during a narcissistic collapse. You can finally see their true thoughts, their feelings, behaviors, and beliefs on display. And I always hope that people will take that terrible experience and turn it into something good by getting out of that situation and start investing in themselves apart from the narcissist. If going no contact is not an option, then I encourage you to go low contact. And that can look like asking the narcissist to contact you once they have seen a professional for help, when they are ready to have a rational conversation, when they are able to control their emotions or feelings or something of that nature. 
You should never tolerate or accept abuse as normal. And when you stay in a situation where the narcissist is experiencing narcissistic collapse and expressing it as narcissistic rage, it might be easy to think, I'll just take it and this will pass soon enough and then we'll be back to normal. But your normal is still extremely toxic and unhealthy. It's still very damaging and nothing ever stays the same. So what you think is going back to normal is actually another level or layer deeper into the abuse soil than when you were experiencing prior to that episode. You are never going back to the level of abuse that you were experiencing yesterday. You are always going to go deeper and deeper and deeper, even if it doesn't feel like it in the moment because you have normalized this experience and your existence. Please listen to what I am saying right now. This may be the thing that changes your life and the trajectory of your life, of your children's lives. God's best for you is to never experience abuse. Think about your own children or your own nieces and nephews and how you want them to be treated. And if what you are experiencing is not what you would wish or pray over them to experience, then something needs to change. You are a powerful person. You make powerful choices and you can make the decision to leave. And at the very least, I hope this video somehow allows you to give yourself permission to not stay around the narcissist when they are in narcissistic rage. I've done an entire video on the topic of narcissistic rage, which you can check out below in the description of this video. But if you have not looked into what a covert contract is and what I'm talking about when I say this term, then I want you to check out this video next so that you can learn about what these sound like, feel like, and turn out like.